Hi everybody and welcome back to my fortnightly sky update on the occasion of the new moon and solar eclipse in Libra which is happening tomorrow on the 14th of October 2023 at 6.55pm and that's UK time so please adjust this to your time zones. So this is um, a solar eclipse and new moon at 21 degrees of Libra, aspected by Uranus in quincunx to this eclipse um, and opposed by Chiron and squared by Pluto. So not only is this an eclipse which is traditionally considered to be an unpredictable and volatile and also somewhat inauspicious event but it is also um, an eclipse which is happening with some challenging aspects from outer planets um, and planetary bodies. So obviously um, this is a very difficult time in the collective. Um, the Mars Pluto square last week, Pluto going direct and I think this eclipse as well because eclipses are often felt for some days um, either side of them and um, eclipses are certainly felt for uh, six months after they happen. Um, I believe that this combination of events has made for a very uh, difficult week in the in the collective and um, I'm not going to um, use this update to narrate events or to give my position on events happening in the collective and rather what um, I would like to do is emphasize that this is a new moon um, in Libra, it's an, an eclipse <laughs> in Libra, and so, and as such, but because it is a, a new moon solar eclipse, it is an, a beginning of sorts. It is um, a, an initiatory energy. It is a place where we can uh, start something new. It is a place where we can set intentions for a new way of being. And it is happening in the sign of Libra. And Libra is all about our relationships, how we relate to one another. Libra is a very social sign. It's not really so much about relationships in the sort of intimate sense. It's much more about all sorts of social relationships and partnerships. So what um, how can we approach relationships in a better way is really where I want to focus this update. How can we as individuals improve our own relationships? And there, in, in that way, contribute by dealing with our immediate environment and our immediate relationships, contributing to a better and more peaceful world. So how can we as individuals go about improving our relationships? Is it possible for us to have our friendships, family relationships, and partnerships in a more understanding and peaceful way. And through this effort, can we understand really what a mountain it is to climb for the world to heal in terms of how the world relates, how humans of the world relate to one another. Let's reflect on the difficulty of creating 
peaceful situations in our own relationships, in our partnerships, in our family relationships, in our friendships, and in our work relationships, in our um, relationships with somebody on the street or somebody in the supermarket or whatever. Relationships are fraught with difficulty and conflict. I really, really believe that the vast majority of people approach relationships from a place of wanting to connect and wanting to give and receive love. I really believe that that is what the vast majority of people are trying to achieve in their relationships. However, as we all know, you can have the very best intentions and yet things do not go according to plan and relationships are difficult. You can be so excited to go to a family gathering. Oh, I'm going to see so-and-so again. I can't wait. You know, it's wonderful. All family's going to be together. And you know how excited people get about things like that. And then when it happens, how many people talk about, you know, when they go, they go to the family celebration for Christmas or um, whatever holiday and um, come together with members of the family and everyone was excited, but... In the end, it turned out that, you know, you ended up in arguments and it was really triggering and all the rest of it. And now you're not speaking to your cousin or um, you have a resentment of, of your uh, uncle or whatever. So I want us to reflect on, um, is it possible for us to allow people to have different ideas from us without it triggering us? Is it possible for us to discuss things with people and not be made angry by them, by the differences between us? Because that's going to tell us a lot about what, why it is so difficult for uh, healing to take place on the world scale. That's really going to tell us much more than um, watching the news or, you know, people having it out on a, on a panel discussion. Looking at how it is for you sitting across a dinner table from somebody who has different views from you is going to give you a lot more insight into what the world is facing than, um, like I say, people talking about some abstract issue uh, on a panel. You will realise that, it, that it's a real difficult thing to stay peaceful in the face of a personal conflict of views um, with another person, even another person who you love and who you have the very best intentions with. So can we work on ourselves in such a way that we could be in that situation this is something you can test this is something you can test the next time that you find yourself selves with um, in any social gathering is it possible for us to hear a person with differing views from ourselves and remain at peace remain um, accepting of the other person, remain in a spirit of love with the other person. Is, is that possible for us? Is it possible for us to witness the suffering of another human being and to have compassion, not look away from it in fear and be there for that person without trying to put in our two pennies worth of opinion on the situation, without trying to solve the problem, without getting triggered, without becoming frustrated and tension building and trying to make the suffering go away so that you don't have to face it. Is it possible for us to be a compassionate and loving presence in the face of another person's suffering, 
as we, if you think about it, when you have been suffering and you have gone to another person with that suffering to try and get um, help, what you really want in all these instances is someone to be there for you, someone to um, show you love, understanding, compassion. But you don't, yeah, a lot of the time you you will recall that when you go to somebody and they try and solve your problems, you feel a certain resistance and, or, and irritation at, at them trying to um, tell you what you should be doing or what you should have done or what they would do. It can bring about, it can trigger you, can make you feel irritated, can make you feel um, frustrated. So let's keep that in mind when we're, we're dealing with other people and try to... We understand that that desire to like give your opinion, to say what you would do, to solve the problem, it's all coming from a place of trying to help because you don't want that person to suffer. It's very difficult for you to sit with their suffering. But actually... Um, that's not what we want and it's not what the other person wants so let's try to be conscious of that and be there for people in a more understanding more compassionate and more useful way um in a uh, there was a, a psychologist called carl rogers and what and he, he had a very uh, nice approach actually to people's problems he didn't offer any advice he just showed them basically they would say what had happened and he would he would repeat back to them what they had said in the, the way he understood it you know to to show that he was listening and that was very very therapeutic for people because people really just want to be listened to they want to express themselves they don't really need you to be waiting waiting to butt in with 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 a, a, a solution or any of these things is it possible for us to to do these things is it possible for us to in let's say okay here's a, here's another difficult one so you've got a partner and sometimes the things that are bothering partners in your relationship are that they maybe they want to explore something new in in their lives they want to explore a new um aspect of themselves they're feeling a pull towards something and that really frightens you and when they tell you that you know how they feel it really frightens you and triggers you and so you your response is to try and crush that um so that that person doesn't change because you're so terrified that if that person changes, that will mean the end of the relationship, at least with the person who it's very important for you that they remain the same, that they, uh, that they remain the same person that you're comfortable with, that you're secure with, that you love. So we can really make it very difficult in our relationships for people to express themselves because it's so important for us that they be a certain way. Can we let go of our idea of what people should be in order for us to be comfortable and allow people to be what they are? Can we allow people to change and develop and grow? Can we be brave enough to allow that to happen? And in that way also embrace our own change and growth and go into new phases um, of our relationships with people. Think about these things in your relationships. How can you improve your relationships with people? Is it possible then for you to forgive? Is it possible for you to forgive the people who have done you wrong in your life? And this is another very difficult one. And if you think about how difficult it is for you to forgive people who have done you wrong, even in trivial ways. If you think about how difficult that is, consider how difficult it is for people who have very, very difficult things to forgive, brutal things to forgive before they can move on. 
um, and you know not get into a spirit of vengeance and create more destruction and create more pain and more suffering try the exercise for yourself can you forgive the person who took your um, boyfriend or girlfriend away from you can you forgive the person who um, the the work colleague who uh, reported you to the supervisor unfairly and um, and made you get into trouble or lose your job you know forgiving things where the other person really really did do you harm can you can you do it because this is going to be very important in how the world heals you know the, the you, one has to do the work on oneself the difficult work on oneself before we can expect the world just to magically become a place of peace where people are no longer um creating pain and suffering and destruction for each other and people are no longer in a cycle of vengeance and and um and uh you know revenge out of righteous anger or whatever this is going to give you the most insight into what we're facing as a collective if you just try to do those that those simple things on your own in your own relationships but maybe if you can do it at the dinner table with the the relative who has views that to you are reprehensible and you can just I still love you, live and let live, uh, let's change the subject and, and let's be together in a spirit of love. If you can do that, maybe that will have a domino effect on the world in reducing conflict and increasing peaceful ability of one person to rub along with another person in this world where this very complex world where we there are many uh, individuals with competing needs and interests and desires and and the rest of it maybe you being able to uh, show understanding and forgiveness for those people who have wronged you will help reduce uh, conflict in the world. In in my experience, at least, um, this seems like it could it, it could have a a better uh, and more healing effect than becoming enraged with righteous anger, which in my life has achieved nothing. I've had, I, I, I um, have been prone to that reaction in the past and I have achieved nothing. I have never solved a problem in that way and I have alienated people in that way and I have uh, lost people in that way and I'm, I'm sorry for that. So that's my message for this new moon eclipse in Libra. Can we do it? I'm going to be trying, so um, I wonder if you'll join me. Anyway, I, I really hope this was helpful and I hope that this eclipse goes easy on you. Take care.